Hi there and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. Today we're going to look at fragrances, so essential oils, um, also known as terpenes and terpenoids. So this should be a very short video because there's not really all that much involved in this subtopic. So to start off with, the properties of essential oils is that they're volatile so they evaporate very easily and they are non-water soluble because they are non-polar so they're predominantly usually all hydrocarbon. There is an exception to that. These terpenoids, sometimes they can have hydroxyl groups on them. So if they do have hydroxyl groups, then obviously that means that they can form hydrogen bonds with water. So they might be slightly soluble. But most of the time they do have a large hydrocarbon non-polar region, which decreases their solubility, even if they do have a hydroxyl group. So terpenes are a class of molecules that are made up of isoprene units. And this is isoprene here. So it's a unit of five carbons with two double bonds. So it's a diene. And you do need to know the systematic name for it. Um, and you should also be able to draw it. You can draw it in the skeletal structure form like this, which is a bit more straightforward. So if you just learn how to draw that, and um, that's basically the same thing as this. You also need to know that it's got five carbons and eight hydrogens. Um, and when they join together to make terpenes, they join by addition reactions. And that's because they've got double carbon to carbon bonds. So they can undergo addition reactions because of them. So you'll get some isoprene units joining up to make a bigger terpene. So this would be an example of like a terpene. Well, this is technically a terpenoid because it's got an oxygen in it. Um, so this is an example one of one down here. Quite often you'll be asked how many isoprene units are in the terpene and to do that all you have to do is count up the number of carbons in the whole thing and divide by five okay so it's very straightforward and that's because there's five carbons in one isoprene unit so if you add all the carbons divide by five that'll tell you how many isoprene units there are in it and then the other thing to bear in mind is that if these are exposed to oxygen and they oxidize or they're exposed to water and they hydrate then the terpenes become terpenoids. So any thing that looks like a terpene that's got an oxygen in it would technically be classed as a terpenoid and they've just got spicier smells than the terpenes, which are a bit sweeter. If something is going to be classed as a terpene, it needs to have a multiple of five carbons because if it doesn't have a multiple of five carbons, then it can't be made up of these five carbon isoprene units. And that is actually everything you really need to know on terpenes. The only other thing you could get asked is to identify an isoprene unit within a terpene or a terpenoid. So my top tip for doing that would be to find a CH3 group and take that as the branch. So this would be the branch here. So then this will be your carbon two, and then you count one, two, three, four from there. So you find your CH3 branch, that's carbon two, go back one and then one, two, three, four, and that would be an isoprene unit there, okay? And um, what you have to watch out for is not doing it like a snake. So quite often people find the CH3 group and then do one, two, three, four. So if you end up drawing something that looks like that, then that's not an isoprene unit, okay? It needs, so it needs to be like a Y shape and not like a snake if you've identified an isoprene unit correctly. And yeah, that's basically it.